South Floridians will once again look to the skies as we break news on the return of the air show. And a historic drought is not only baking the Midwest, it's also threatening to drive up the cost of food. Live, this is NBC6 News at 11. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us. I'm Sharon Lawson in for Pam Giganti. In the news, one of the most exciting events in South Florida will take off for the second year in a row. Just a short time ago, the dates for next year's Lauderdale Air Show were revealed. The event drew large crowds in this past April, and organizers are hoping it will be bigger and better the next time around. Willard Shepard is in satellite control to fill us in, and he's a pilot himself, so I'm pretty sure you're excited about this as well, Well, yeah, Willard. we love anything like this, Sharon. Thank you. The Air Show is coming back to Fort Lauderdale next year. Whether you love the airplanes or not, this in a way is like money falling from the sky. It brings lots of jobs and business to the area. Now the air show next year will be held on the first weekend in May. That's the third and the fourth of May. And it's also the same weekend as Fleet Week. Now the city thought that combining the two again would really add up to help bring more visitors to the city. Now this year the pilots were able to take to the air on Saturday, but they were grounded because of the weather on Sunday. Still, there's lots of excitement over bringing the air show back to Fort Lauderdale Beach after it didn't take place for several years. This time around, the military and the civilian airplanes will be strutting their stuff. Now that it coincides with Fleet Week, uh, you're going to have you know the Navy in town, you're going to have the Coast Guard in town, so. We think this event could just be bigger and better than it was in its heyday and certainly just uh, increasing in excitement from last year's event that we had such a great day on Saturday. Now some workers on the beach tell us they can take in enough cash on just the weekend of the air show to pay the rent for a few months. The hotels say it's one of their best weekends of the year. They're happy to see the air show return again the first weekend of May. Back over to you. Willard, great to hear that. Thank you so much for your live report from Satellite Control. And let's turn things over right now to the weather. Jennifer Reeves standing by live to talk about this hot weather and weather will probably fire up some storms in the afternoon. How about it, Jen? Yeah, Sharon, we are going to see another hot day, but not as hot as we'll be tomorrow. We could see a couple of showers and storms pop up later this afternoon. In fact, seeing some light rain down in Dade this morning, and that's the way we'll stay for the rest of the uh, early afternoon. Just some hit or miss spotty showers. Could see a storm or two later this afternoon. Only about a 30% chance though. 88 degrees your current temperature in Fort Lauderdale, 85 in Miami, 84 in Key West. Winds are about 5 to 10 miles per hour and we are going to see those temperatures warm up a couple more degrees before 3 o'clock. Few storms in the forecast. We'll see 85 degrees dropping down by 7 o'clock. Huge changes coming our way tomorrow though. We do have uh, some drier air coming in. We also have lower rain chances and warmer temperatures. So all of that to talk about in your full forecast. Sharon. Jen, thank you. Well, this morning, one man wakes up in jail. Another one is dead after police say a heated argument turned violent in plantation. Officers say a man tried to kill himself after he shot and killed another man at the Harbor Town Apartments in Plantation. It's being reported the suspect in his late 30s was moments away from taking his own life when police discovered him. Before the man was found in a second floor apartment, authorities launched an all out search to find him, keeping residents out of their homes nerve-wracking you know I'm just coming home I'm worried I don't know what's going on I'm looking on my phone and I see that they're searching for a gunman a 31 year old man died at the scene his identity has not been released the suspect's weapon was recovered at the scene we are learning more about the victim of a hit and run in Miami he is 70 year old Charlie Kimball who remains in critical condition this morning at Ryder Trauma Center. Police say he was struck by a car Monday night in the area of Northwest 7th Avenue and 19th Street. Kimball, whose family says is legally blind, did not have ID on him. They say the hospital staff made the connection because Kimball had been treated there before. Surveillance video captured this snapshot of the car in question. Police say it is a purple Ford Taurus that should have damage to the windshield. If you have any information on this hit and run, contact Miami Dade Crime Stoppers at 305-471-TIPS. We move now to a case of severe animal cruelty. A young dog was found bloody and burned at a South Florida home. Now investigators want to know who caused the severe burns on the helpless canine. Last Monday, a neighbor found the boxer outside his home. He noticed the dog had around 20 inches of bloody burn marks on his back. The North Miami man, who does not want to be identified, says he was so shocked by the appearance of the dog, he did not know what to do. 
came out to play with my dog and I saw it curled up there against the wall. I went inside, got it some water, um, and I called animal control. I didn't know what to do. Um, the animal looked really bad. Miami-Dade Animal Services have begun a criminal investigation and cited his North Miami owner with animal cruelty. The dog, who has appropriately been named Courage, is going to be okay. Vets say he still needs at least one more month of treatment before he'll be ready for adoption. This morning, the Miami-Dade School Board will be meeting to take on a tentative budget plan, one that could close the $67 million gap for the next school year. But it still does not solve the district's looming capital crisis. Miami-Dade School Superintendent Alberto Carvalho proposed a tentative $2.7 billion budget that protects full-time teachers and relies on more virtual classes. Plus, district administrators are pressed to solve a big problem, how to pay for nearly $2 billion in deferred maintenance and capital upgrades at schools. Carvalho plans to bring a long-term solution to the school board by the end of the school year. Today, the Obama administration announced the president's plan for the creation of a national science, technology, math and engineering corps. The corps will begin with 50 teachers established in 50 sites and will be expanded over the next four years to reach 10,000. The $1 billion program will reward teachers with a $20,000 a year stipend. A live look inside Signature Grand in Davie, where hundreds of people looking for work have come out to a major job fair. Dozens of companies are looking to hire over 400 employees, from engineers to bookkeepers. Team 6 reporter Julia Bagg is live with details on this big hiring event. Julia, you've been there all morning. Hi there, Sharon. That's right. You can see a crowded ballroom here at the Signature Grand. Hundreds of people here hoping to take their shot at walking out of here with a job prospect. A line wrapped around the Signature Grand Lobby with job seekers vying for more than 400 positions from 42 different employers. <laughs> Companies came to recruit for openings from Miami-Dade to Palm Beach County and in some cases offered a chance for an on-the-spot interview or hiring. We came down here to look for uh, part-time associates, someone that would work, you know, maybe some nights, some weekends, uh, fully flexible hours. A Home Depot recruiter told me what matters most in his eyes. Well, somebody that's super enthusiastic, somebody that has come to us and, and really has um, no experience required, to be honest with you. Uh, we just want somebody that's overwhelmingly um, interested in servicing our customers. Ask job fair organizer Tiffany Price. She'll tell you here, face-to-face -face first impressions matter. It gives you uh, such a you know head start on getting a job with the company because you can actually meet the person who would be hiring you. 20-year-old George Clavel is a college grad with two years of Army Reserve experience looking for just about anything. I'm confident. I'm disciplined. I have two years of experience with the U.S. Army, so they know that I'm squared away. 37-year-old single dad Hadley Jerome is hoping for a sales or customer service position. Being unemployed, I mean, you have to pay bills. I can't pay bills if I'm just sitting at home. The key question is always, when do I start? Now, this is not the only major job fair going on today in South Florida. In fact, if you follow me on Facebook, you'll find out details on another job fair going on in Miami-Dade County. That one's going on until 7 o'clock this evening. Right here, though, in Davie at the Signature Grand, you can come up until 2 o'clock. And you can see you do have quite a bit of competition. But job fair organizers say you should come, you should dress as best as you can, and bring plenty of resumes. Reporting live in Davie, Julia Bag, NBC6 South Florida. And we wish those job seekers luck. Thank you very much, Julia. The Miami City Planning, Zoning and Appeals Board will be taking up some important issues this morning. They'll be holding hearings with the Miami City Commission on loading docks for a proposed Walmart in Midtown Miami. It needs a city ordinance to allow delivery service access on loading zones on North Miami Avenue, south of Northeast 34th Street. The world's largest retailer has yet to make an official deal to open its first store in Miami City limits. The Miami Adrian Arch Center will get up to $5 million Million dollars to help with repair damages. Back in May, you may recall a storm pipe shut down a performance of the Lion King and caused severe flooding. Miami Dade County Commissioners approved to pay the sender the money on Tuesday. The money will also go towards covering the bill for a forensic engineer to investigate what caused that pipe to break. Time right now is 1109.
a trouble on the tarmac. A murder suspect steals and crashes a commuter plane. How did it happen? We'll tell you. And a massive blaze gets the best of more than two dozen firefighters. The story coming up when the NBC6 News at 11 a.m. returns. Injured in an accident? Call 1-800-33-COHEN. At Cohen & Cohen, we are the professionals with more than 40 years experience in South Florida. We are Cohen & Cohen, attorneys at law. For a free consultation, call 1-800-33-COHEN. Mirror, mirror on the wall. What's the most common food allergy of them all? I don't know, just a mirror. You should ask a doctor. But that dress is fabulous. Since that mirror was not so helpful, we're here to see Dr. Malka, an allergy and asthma specialist at Pediatric Associates. Hi, Dr. Malka. How are you? So how common are food allergies in children? They're very common. About 12% of patients report having food allergies, but only 6% actually have food allergies when tested. The most common allergies in children are milk, egg, and peanut. And what kind of symptoms should parents be looking out for? That can range. It can go from mild symptoms such as hives. If that occurs, you want to be seen by a specialist such as myself to be treated and prevent other reactions. Or more severe, such as difficulty breathing or lip swelling. If that occurs, you should be seen at the local emergency department and follow up with a specialist to complete the evaluation. Okay, very important. Are there medical conditions commonly associated with food allergies? Yes, you're four times more likely to develop asthma, which can present with nighttime or daytime cough, cough when you run or play, or even a lingering cough after a viral illness. Should you wait until your child has some sort of an attack to, to seek doctor's assistance? No, you want to be tested like we do here at Pediatric Associates. Testing early can prevent you from having an allergic reaction or an asthma attack. Which I imagine would be extremely scary for any parent. Oh, the unknown is very scary. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you so much for all of your information. Anytime. Thanks for coming. Clearly, you should see an allergy specialist at the first sign of symptoms. I'm Jenny Eisenman, and that's the scoop. Dr. Malka? If you're looking for a pediatrician or would like more information about this segment, visit pediatricassociates.com. We have 21 convenient locations throughout South Florida. Planning your next career move? Log on to NBCMiami.com and search NBC6 Jobs. Or call the NBC6 Job Hotline at 877-5HR-JOBS. Injured in an accident? Call 1-800-33-COHEN. At Cohen & Cohen, we are the professionals with more than 40 years' experience in South Florida. We are Cohen & Cohen, attorneys at law. For a free consultation, call 1-800-33-COHEN. Welcome back. More than two dozen firefighters are injured battling a massive fire in New York City. The six alarm fire broke out early this morning in a building near Yankee Stadium. 28 firefighters and two residents suffered minor injuries in the fire. More than 200 firefighters battled the blaze for more than four hours trying to bring it under control. A pilot wanted in connection with a murder attempts to steal a plane from a small southern Utah airport before killing himself. Authorities say 40-year-old Brian Joseph Hedgeland, who flew for South SkyWest, jumped the fence at the airport and gained access to a SkyWest jet. He was unable to get the plane airborne and instead crashed into the terminal and several cars. Officers found Hedgeland dead from a self-inflicted gunshot wound. Syrian's rebel commander says his forces carried out an attack that killed the country's defense minister and another government official. Dawood Raja and his deputy general, Asaf Shakat, who also was President Bashar Assad's brother-in-law, were killed. The Syrian government claims a suicide bomber attacked the National Security Building during a meeting of cabinet ministers and senior security officials. The rebel leader denies it was a suicide attack, saying all those who carried out the operation are safe. He said the attack marked the beginning of the end of the regime. Also new today, two defected Syrian generals are reportedly among some 600 refugees who fled to Turkey in the last 24 hours. The Vatican has passed a key European financial transparency test, marking a milestone in the efforts to shed its reputation as a shady tax haven. The Vatican received poor grades for the effectiveness of its new financial watchdog agency and for the ability of its banks to track suspicious transactions. However, the committee praised the Vatican for making so much progress in a short amount of time to come into compliance with the new standards. In Washington today, dire warnings. If Congress doesn't extend the Bush tax cuts by the end of the year, the economy could go into freefall. 
But who should get those tax breaks? That's what the debate's all about. NBC's Tracy Potts is on Capitol Hill with this morning with the latest. American people don't deserve to watch this debate come down to the last minute. But it may. The Bush tax cuts expire at the end of the year, and Congress must decide whether to extend them. Everybody who's making $250,000 a year or less, your income taxes will not go up one dime. Period. But Republicans want to include the rich, too, arguing a tax hike on job creators will make things worse. We've got two wings out there flapping in the American political system, and the fuselage is missing. A new report from the aerospace industry predicts what they call employment Armageddon. Two million job losses next year. That's a lot of jobs. Big spending cuts may also kick in if Congress doesn't act. We expect you to act and act now and not uh, use it as a political wedge. Former Vice President Dick Cheney told Republicans that could leave the Defense Department unable to deal with sudden threats. But the biggest concern right now is the economy. Federal Reserve Chair Ben Bernanke tells Congress not extending the tax breaks could delay recovery. It would probably uh, uh, knock the recovery back into a recession and cost a lot of jobs. He urged lawmakers not just to kick the can down the road, but to come up with a real long-term solution. That could be a tall order in the middle of a heated campaign season. From Washington, I'm Tracy Potts. Back to you. As the sweltering heat continues to sweep across the country, you may start seeing some of the effects at the register. Expect to begin shelling out more cash on everything from beef to medicine. Dairy products will jump an estimated 6%. Beef prices will rise at least 5%. And anything made from corn and soybeans will spike 10% or even more. That means cereal, tortilla chips, ice cream, milk, and pizza prices Folks, they're all going up. But it also means that many other things will likely cost more, too. Anything with corn syrup will be more expensive. That includes items like barbecue sauce, sodas, and even over-the-counter medicines like Dayquil. Even items like flavored water will cost more because it contains sucralose made from corn. And if you're used to buying green cleaners, they'll be costing you more as well because they're made with ethanol, a byproduct of corn. Everything is going up. Well, turning to weather, that's going up too. The heat, a very hot day on tap for us today. Jennifer Reese, tell us about it. Yeah, it is going up. And today's not going to be anything compared to tomorrow. It'll be even warmer tomorrow. But the radar looking good. We're staying dry aside from a few very yeah. small showers right there around US 1. And we are going to see those showers possibly increase by the afternoon. It's 85 degrees in Miami, 88 Fort Lauderdale, 87 in Opelika. Temperatures around 84 in Homestead. Down in the Keys, we are staying right around 88 in Marathon, 84 in Key West, and we are going to stay awfully warm for the afternoon. We've had a pretty quiet weather day. We do have a little cloud deck out there. It is pulling in just partly cloudy skies, and what we'll see is a few afternoon storms later today. We're already starting to get that dry air mass in place. That Saharan dust from Africa moving in later tonight into tomorrow morning. What that's going to do is lower those rain chances quite a bit. It'll bring us hazy conditions for tomorrow through the beginning part of the weekend, but it'll make us drier. It'll also increase those temperatures. We'll be in the low 90s, but feel more like the triple digits tomorrow through the first half of the weekend. Out in the tropics, we're staying very quiet. No tropical development expected over the next 24 to 48 hours. So you can rest assured in that department. 89 degrees for today. Afternoon showers and storms possible. South winds about 5 to 10 miles per hour. We are going to see that dust arrive later this afternoon or this evening, rather. Southeast winds at 5 to 10 with temperatures dropping to 79 degrees overnight. Here's your boating forecast. South southeast winds 7 to 12 knots with sea seas about 2 feet with a light chop on the bay. You have a surf temperature of 83 degrees and you have a high tide earlier this morning. Your next low tide though is at 231 this afternoon. Here is your extended forecast and temperatures are going to stay right around 89 degrees today. We'll be warming up tomorrow. We're going to see uh, 91 but feeling more like the triple digits. Rain chances will stay slim to none all the way through the first half of the weekend. We'll see about a 30 percent chance of rain on Sunday but staying hot through the early part of the week. And NBC6 is giving away two one-day passes that get you into both Universal Studios and Islands of Adventure in Orlando. All you have to do is like us on Facebook and enter. Be sure to watch the NBC6 News at 11 tonight to see if you won. Sharon? Thank you, Jen. If you're used to driving on the State Road 826, you might want to listen up. Starting today, 
all State Road 826 westbound lanes and one eastbound lane will be closed. The lanes will be closed between Northwest 47th Avenue and Northwest 57th Avenue between the hours of 9 p.m. and 6 a.m. The closures will allow contractors to install a new electronic sign in the median. Westbound drivers will be guided to exit at Northwest 47th Avenue and proceed west on Northwest 167th Street. All lanes are set to be reopened by 6 a.m. on Thursday, July 19th. And starting on Friday night at 11, southbound drivers on I-595 will be diverted onto what will become the future exit lanes to Griffin Road. Lanes will be reduced and shifted to temporary pavement while girders are set overhead for a new ramp connecting I-595 to both the southbound Turnpike and Griffin Road. Drivers can expect the same obstacle course the following weekend, July 27th to July 30th. The project is set to be completed in 2014. Well, coming up, a tattoo parlor looking to make a permanent mark. The body art. Dozens are getting to commemorate a former world leader. But first, here's what's coming up at 11.30 on 6 in the Mix. Hey everyone, I'm Roxanne Vargas. Coming up on 6 in the Mix, you won't want to miss my one-on-one -on -one interview with Latin heartthrob William Levy. Find out his latest projects, what he's been up to, and uh, find out what he's been craving lately as he misses Miami. Also all new at 11.30, Holly Berry injured on the set. Find out what happened. Plus, from the 305 to the 907, find out where Pitbull's heading next. And Tarpon Ben, add some flavor to your fish. All that, plus find out who's the winner of our NBC6 South Florida Facebook contest. Someone's going to Swim Week. We'll also show you a preview of some more fashion you'll see. All that and a whole lot more coming your way at 1130 on 6 in the Mix. I'm Roxanne Vargas. I'll see you then. A list of the top beach and poolside faux pas. Chair hoggers, I'm talking to you. Learn what generates the most complaints. Plus breaking news, weather and traffic. Tomorrow, watch NBC6 South Florida today from 5 to 7 a.m. Aren't you tired of dentures? Missing teeth, difficulty chewing, loss of taste, your face looking shrunken, wrinkled, and getting worse. Working with the South Florida Dental Implant Group, you can rid yourself of these problems with the use of dental implants. The South Florida Dental Implant Group is dedicated in giving you the freedom to chew like you have not experienced in years. Call for your complimentary consultation today. 1-800-541-3010. Eating can be wonderful again. I'm Pam Giganti. And I'm Ryan Phillips. Join us for the Go NBC6 Travel Expo June 2nd and 3rd at Aventura Mall. Come plan your next exciting adventure or weekend escape. Plus, your favorite NBC6 personalities will be there. For details, visit GoNBC6Travel.com. St. Lucia, one of the world's most romantic destinations. The Elite Island Resort's all-inclusive Morgan Bay Beach Resort is a great way to discover St. Lucia's charms. To learn more, visit Facebook.com slash Elite Island Resorts, then like us on Facebook for exclusive offers. Mom? Mm hmm? What does your esophagus look like? Uh, we're kind of in a hurry. Let's look it up after school. Here. Thanks, Anita. Get the speed to answer life's most pressing questions. Ugh. Call AT&T today to get UVerse high-speed internet for as little as $14.95 a month for 12 months with a one-year price guarantee. Plus, get on-the-go access to our entire national Wi-Fi hotspot network with over 30,000 hotspots. Dad, how did Luke Cage get his powers? Oh. Uh, Here, I'll show you. Luke Cage's superhuman powers were an unintended side effect. Thanks, Anita. Call AT&T today to get UVerse high-speed internet for as little as $14.95 a month for 12 months with a one-year price guarantee. It's the fastest internet for the price. Mom, how is paper recycled? Anita! Answer life's most pressing questions instantly. AT&T. <laughs> Welcome back. The young South African runner, nicknamed Blade Runner, is now fresh off his last race last night in Italy and is now getting ready to travel to London for the Olympics. Oscar Vittorius will run the 400 meters and will be part of South Africa's 4x400 relay team. He wears carbon fiber blades and was cleared to compete against able-bodied athletes. While he did not win last night's race, he came in second and was satisfied with the results. Congrats to him. And we're now just nine days away from the 2012 Summer Olympic Games in London. The excitement starts on July 27th right here on NBC6. It's Nelson Mandela Day. 
and one tattoo parlor in South Africa is making a permanent mark on the holiday. The owners of Keep It Real say they thought the promo would be a creative way to honor Nelson Mandela's 94th birthday and raise money for a great cause. At least 11 people have gotten the tattoos and the owners are still hoping to reach their goal of 67. Many people will celebrate Nelson Mandela's birthday this year by dedicating 67 minutes of their time to help others. Well, he's done so much, so why not? And from on air to online, here's a look at the trending topics. A story we reported on earlier in this newscast is trending on Twitter. As a three key members of the Syrian government are killed in an attack by rebel forces and 600 Syrians who reportedly defected to Turkey. Jeremy Lin is moving on to Houston, also a top tweet. The New York Knicks confirmed Tuesday night that they will not match the Houston Rockets' three-year $25 million offer for Lynn, a restricted free agent. And actress Halle Berry is recovering after she was hit on the head during a movie shoot fight sequence. The discovery of two bodies in a Southwest Miami-Dade home is tough click on NBC6.com. The bodies of a man and woman were found Monday after family members became concerned what they did not hear from the couple, who had recently moved into the home in the 13,000 block of Southwest 289th Terrace. Police have not yet released their identities or the cause of death. Also trending on our website, the arrest of two filmmakers after they pulled a prank on the wrong person. The video titled Russian Hitman Prank Gone Wrong shows one of the pranksters carrying a briefcase, then telling the victim that they only have 60 seconds to get away from the briefcase. When the victim realizes he's being filmed, he attacks the filmmakers and then calls the police. The duo was charged with felony bomb hoax. And remember to check out the new and improved NBC Miami app. It's now available. Just go to the app store on your iPhone, iPad, or Android and search NBC Miami to download for free. Lots going on. Yeah, <laughs> lots going on. Yes. And we're going to have a warm day today with just a slight chance of afternoon showers, drier weather, and hotter weather on the way tomorrow. Sounds like a plan. Yes. We'll take it. Now, uh, Six in the Mix with Roxy. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye, everybody.